In this video, we explain the concept of the chemical potential. All right, so our goal in this section of thermodynamics is to understand the stability and the properties of a mixture of substances. Uh, most fundamentally, we're going to be interested in a mixture in the solution phase, which is where most of the chemistry in the life sciences takes place. Okay, so uh, again, the idea is that we're going to have here a mixture uh, in the liquid phase of uh, usually two components, a binary mixture A and B, and they're not going to react with each other, they're simply going to be in contact with each other. So this would be, for example, glucose in water. Uh, now the question that we ask ourselves is, how do we begin to understand the thermodynamic properties of this mixture? Okay, so for example, we could ask, well, how do you actually write the volume for uh, a mixture like this? Well, the total volume of the mixture will be trivially the volume of A plus the volume of B, okay, in principle. Now, usually, uh, when we uh, think about properties of uh, uh, substances A and B, like water and uh, glucose, the way we think about this is in terms of molar quantities. Okay, so a way to rewrite this in terms of molar quantities would be to say that, well, uh, the volume of A is simply going to be the contribution of mole uh, per mole of A uh, multiplied by the number of moles of A that you have, and then the volume of V is just going to be equal to the number of moles of V that you have multiplied by the contribution per mole. Okay, and that is correct. This is the thermodynamic uh, correct way to express this. Again, uh, both of them are equivalent, but this one is more useful because, again, normally we actually have molar quantities uh, that are easy to, to, to uh, put in tables and to measure. Okay. Uh, now, this is entirely general, and here we're actually just uh, using it for the volume, but it applies to any thermodynamic variable uh, of interest. And the thermodynamic variable of interest uh, to uh, the stability of the mixture is going to be the Gibbs energy. Okay, so uh, taking a key from this uh, discussion, then we can write what uh, the total Gibbs energy for the mixture would be, so that we can calculate changes upon a uh, change in temperature, a change in pressure, or uh, any other change, right? So when we have two components, then uh, the Gibbs energy of the mixture is going to be the number of moles of A multiplied by the contribution per mole to the Gibbs energy of A plus the number of moles of B multiplied uh, by the contribution per mole to the molar Gibbs energy of to the Gibbs energy per, uh, of B. Okay, so these values are actually extremely important. And uh, they are so important that we're actually going, actually going to rename them. Uh, from now on, instead of using molar Gibbs energy of A and B, uh, or of water and glucose, we're actually going to call them the chemical potential. Okay? That's how we uh, call this. And that is the definition of chemical potential. This is just a Greek letter mu. Uh, again, that is just simply the molar Gibbs energy uh, of a substance at a particular set of conditions. Okay, and again, this, this uh, chemical potential is going to be with us until the end of thermodynamics, so it's quite important that you remember where it comes from. Okay, so the, uh, the name is interesting, chemical potential. Uh, essentially, uh, this is a measure for the ability of A to elicit change. Okay, and this is uh, a measure of the ability of B to elicit change. The higher the your chemical potential, the more ability you have to make a change. Okay? Uh, so, so again, this is just the definition of what the chemical potential is, and a way to think about this is in terms of chemical punch, okay? or again, the ability to cause a change uh, in a mixture. Okay. This, again, is the definition of the chemical potential, and it's a concept that is going to be with us until the end of thermodynamics.